Welcome back. This is day two where we are going to discuss the material requirements in ASME 31.3 awareness course. In previous uh, video, we talked about introduction to ASME 31.3. This is 30 day course, 30 topics, three subtopic per topic and 90 subtopic we are going to discuss in total. So today we'll start with the safety talk and we'll be having three subtopics under material requirements material selection, limitations, component standards, specifications, criteria for material identification and traceability. So we are going to cover these three topics in this video. After that, uh, we'll go through the quiz against these three subtopics so that we can uh, understand how much we have learned. We will be having correct answers and along with that, we'll be having the detailed explanation to each question also. So this is how we are going to cover uh, this topic. So let's welcome Peter to uh, who is going to explain these sub three subtopics so let's start with day two material requirements hello everyone today we'll discuss the importance of personal protective equipment or ppe in the workplace ppe is your shield personal protective equipment acts as your shield against workplace hazards it includes items like hard hats safety glasses gloves earplugs and more PPE is designed to protect you from injuries and potential dangers. Wear the right PPE, always wear the right PPE for the job you are doing. Different tasks may require different types of PPE. If you are unsure, ask your supervisor or safety officer for guidance. Check for damage before using any PPE, inspect it for any damage or wear. If you find any defects, don't use it and report it to your supervisor. Get the right fit. PPE must fit properly to provide maximum protection. Adjust straps, bands, or earpieces to make sure they fit comfortably and securely. No alterations allowed. Never alter or modify PPE on your own. It can weaken its protective capabilities and put you at risk. Use PPE only as intended. Proper storage. When you're done using PPE, store it in a clean and dry place. Avoid leaving it in direct sunlight, extreme temperatures, or damp areas. Remember, your safety is in your hands. Always wear your PPE as required, and if you see others not using theirs, remind them kindly. Let's make safety a priority for everyone. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to our 30-day beginner course on ASME B31.3. Today, we are going to explore an essential topic, material selection and limitations in the context of process piping. When designing a piping system, one of the critical decisions is selecting the material for construction. Let's dive into some key aspects to consider. Firstly, we need to understand the properties of different materials commonly used in piping. This includes materials like carbon steel, stainless steel, copper, and more. Each material has its unique characteristics that impact its performance. Corrosion resistance is another vital consideration. The selected material must be able to withstand the corrosive effects of the fluid being transported. Failure to choose a corrosion-resistant material can lead to premature pipe degradation and leakage. Temperature limitations are essential to ensure that the chosen material can handle the temperature range of the fluid and operating conditions. Extreme temperatures can cause material failure, so it's crucial to select a material that can safely operate within the required temperature range. Pressure rating is equally important. The material must have the strength to withstand the maximum pressure expected in the piping system. Using a material with insufficient pressure rating can lead to catastrophic failure. Material compatibility is a crucial factor to avoid any adverse reactions between different materials used in the piping system or with the fluid being transported. Incompatible materials can lead to corrosion and other issues. We must ensure that the selected materials comply with relevant material standards and specifications, such as ASTM or ASME standards. 
These standards provide guidelines for material properties, testing, and manufacturing. Weldability is another aspect to consider, especially if welding is required during fabrication. Some materials are easier to weld than others, and proper welds are essential for the integrity of the system. Cost considerations also play a significant role. We need to strike a balance between material cost and the desired performance and longevity of the piping system. Environmental factors like temperature, humidity, and other external influences can impact material degradation over time. It's essential to evaluate how the environment may affect the chosen material. Lastly, for special services such as high temperature or cryogenic applications, we need to be aware of the limitations of the selected material until under such conditions. By considering all these factors, we can make informed decisions and select the right material for our piping system, ensuring its safety, reliability, and long-term performance. That's all for today's video. In our next topic, we'll delve into piping components standards and specifications. So, stay tuned and keep learning. Hello everyone, and welcome back to our 30-day beginner course on ASME B31.3. Today, we are diving into another crucial topic, piping component standards and specifications. In the world of process piping, using standardized components is of utmost importance. Let's explore why and how. Component standards form the backbone of a reliable piping system. These standards ensure that the components we use, like flanges, valves, and fittings, meet specific requirements for quality, performance, and safety. One set of standards is provided by ASME, the American Society of Mechanical Engineers. ASME has developed various standards that govern different aspects of piping components. For example, ASME B16.5 specifies the dimensions and pressure ratings for flanges. Another important player is ASTM, the American Society for Testing and Materials. ASTM provides specifications for the materials used in piping components. These specifications detail the properties and characteristics of materials to ensure they are suitable for their intended use. When it comes to materials, testing plays a crucial role. Materials must undergo rigorous testing to ensure they meet the required specifications. This testing helps guarantee that the components can handle the stresses and conditions they will encounter in service. Dimensional requirements are also vital. Components must meet specific size and shape criteria to ensure proper fit and function within the piping system. Pressure ratings are crucial for safety. Piping components should have pressure ratings that match the intended use of the system. This ensures that they can safely handle the pressures they will be subjected to. Material marking is a common practice. Components are often marked with information about the material type, grade, and other relevant details. This helps in identifying and verifying the components during installation and maintenance. Certification is essential to verify that components comply with the standards and specifications. Certifications provide confidence that the components are of the expected quality and performance. Traceability is another critical aspect. It involves keeping a record of the origin and history of piping components. This helps in maintaining quality control and ensuring that components are genuine and meet the required standards. Inspection and verification are the final steps before installation. Components need to be inspected and verified to confirm that they meet the necessary standards and are ready for use in the piping system. By understanding and adhering to these piping component standards and specifications, we can ensure the reliability, safety, and performance of our piping systems. That wraps up today's video. In our next topic, 
we'll delve into the criteria for material identification and traceability. So, stay tuned and keep learning. Hello and welcome back to our 30-day beginner course on ASME B31.3. Today, we're delving into a topic that ensures the quality and integrity of our piping components, criteria for material identification and traceability. Ensuring the right material is used and that it can be back to its source is crucial in maintaining a safe and reliable piping system. Let's explore the key aspects. Material marking is the first step. Components should have clear markings indicating their material type, grade, and other relevant details. This helps in, helps in easy identification and verification during installation and maintenance. Material test reports, or MTRs, play a significant role in traceability. These reports provide essential information about the material's origin, properties, and testing. Keeping records of MTRs is vital for ensuring that the materials used meet the required specifications. Heat numbers are assigned to materials during manufacturing. Each heat number is unique and helps in tracking the materials used in a particular batch. Batch identification involves grouping materials from the same heat number together for easier traceability. Document control is essential for maintaining organized records of material-related documentation. Proper documentation helps in verifying the authenticity and quality of the materials. Support documentation is also crucial. Materials should come with documentation from the supplier, including details about the material specifications and properties. Inspection and verification of materials upon receipt is a critical step. This ensures that the received materials match the required specifications and are suitable for use in the piping system. Retention of records is important. Material records should be retained for a specified period, allowing for future reference and quality assurance. Non-conformance reporting is essential for addressing any discrepancies or deviations from the specified requirements. This helps in maintaining the quality and integrity of the materials and the entire piping system. Finally, material change control is a process that ensures any changes in materials are properly reviewed and approved before implementation. This prevents unintended consequences and ensures that changes are in line with the required standards. By adhering to these criteria for material identification and traceability, we can maintain the quality, reliability, and safety of our piping components and systems. That, con that concludes today's video. In our next topic, we'll dive into understanding pressure design basics. So, stay tuned and keep learning.
so this was all about uh, three subtopics of uh, material requirements in day 3 we are going to cover the pressure design of piping where we are going to cover these three subtopics understanding we will try to understand the pressure design basics factors affecting pipe wall thickness design equations and examples along with that we will be having our quiz and safety talk in day 3 also so thank you for watching see you in the next part